Oh yeah, like the dog shit that creates SCP. <laughs> no, the horse shit that creates SCPs. I forgot we put that there. <laughs> or cooties. Uh, <laughs> or the emojis know. that almost we had the foundation wipe almost all of Japan over. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A- anyone want to talk about that one time? <laughs> SCP Foundation just straight up committed one of the most atrocious acts of genocide in human history. What? What happened? All what because of emojis. What? There was, there was an SCP <laughs> that there's an SCP that's an emoji that that's an infection, and there's no cure for it except for death. So the foundation they just started wiping out Japanese people <laughs> who were infected. Why do I like this fan base? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Before we continue on, um, Hatchet, I'm not sure if you noticed this, but um, uh, there was apparently drama that went on that that was incredibly stupid on the small group of uh, racist and homophobic and transphobic people with SCP Wiki, because they decided. For Pride Month, as well as for some SCPs, to have Pride symbols as on um, the SCP symbol, like for SCP that would have to deal with transgender, uh, they would have transgender symbol on it. Yeah, yeah, and they got messed up, and they created a site that has a lot of iffy stuff I can't talk about on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, it is I've... bad. Yeah, I've I've heard quite a bit about um the the purge of yeah uh, extremely problematic people from the SCP list. I'm telling that not all of the oldest SCP fans are like them. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, characters like Bright wouldn't have really even been created. Oh yeah. <laughs> Because they're any gender, oh, any species. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, like the these purges were to a large extent, like when they first happened, were largely put on by some of the original founders of the SCP Foundation, just because they didn't want that shit in their Creative Commons, comment, Creative Commons fictional saying, world. Not mainly to discredit, like. Founders, I was saying that because one, that is not that. Ha- there are some people that are that like that. I heard one person on YouTube try to claim that was the original or old like main uh, wave of SCP fans. I just wanted to discredit it by saying no. That's that even in the oldest days of the SCP fandom, that was never the majority of the fan base. Yeah, and plus, if the old fa- the founders like. Are so upset about it. Why weren't they upset by the gayest man alive and the stone that turns you into hermaphrodite? Yeah. Well, <laughs> erection either turns you into one or. or yeah. Oh, we all know the SCP. Yeah. Also, the SCP that if you're trans, it'll give you the right body count. Yep. If you're non binary or gender fluid, you'll fucking expo- explode. No, you won't explode. <laughs> no, you won't. It, the stone It'll gets change. confused, and the more you touch the stone, the more likely you are to die. So, you know. Is that like an actual thing with it? Because I would yes. think it would just. Wait, does it? If you touch it, if you touch it too much, oh, yeah. uh, you you will die. And also, if you're not on like the gender binary, or your gender isn't aligned with the gender like binary, uh, it does, it can't really do anything with you. It's it gets confused. It throws its hands up in the air and be like, "Here, I'll." Fucking ba da ba ba boom! It's like when you put a character into like a Barbie dress up. It's like that, but like your body. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, but yeah, I think they would probably have problems with those two SCPs (laughs) if they were so bothered by that symbol. (laughs) Yeah, but anyway, enough talk about that drama. Uh, on to the next SCP. Anyway, SCP-738 consists of three components. A matched set of mahogany furniture, including one desk, 
currently labeled as SV738-1. One straight back chair, currently labeled as SV738-2. And one ornate throne style office chair, chair labeled SCP-738-3. All with brass, uh, brass embellishments and purple velvet. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Twitch. Uh, I mean, <laughs> thank you, Cheery. Thank you, Just subscribed. I read what you. I read. I read what you said. I can't believe I actually read the message. I read the message. Shut up, Twitch. Okay, for Nick Hatchet. Ray is dying. Hatchet, if you didn't know what it said, Jerry uh, showed that they was a subscribe for two months, and their message that actually played out with the, the robot voice was shut up twitch yeah i know i hate that i know from experience that if you ignore it they're just gonna keep harassing you with it so it just annoying. yeah <laughs> Anyway, the effect begins when a sentient entity sits in SB-738-2 in front of SB-738-1 with SB-738-3 resting behind SB-738-2. Camera shows uh, SB-738-3 moving during the effect, frequently leaning back into a re relaxed state, as well as moving closer to or further away from SB-738-2. Occasionally, SCP-738-3 is moved in front of SCP-738-2. Furthermore, cameras show papers and folders containing uh, containing papers leaving SCP-738-1's drawers. Papers are made of parchment, a quill pen, and a bottle of ink emerge from the long drawer. The pen will write on the part on the parchment. Audio recorders record a distorted voice speaking. This voice will make offers and promises attempting to tempt the occupant of SB-73-2, meaning it has been e extracted from the spoken voice. If in this mean this time the entity sitting at SB-73-2 makes a request, then the tempting and, and offers will cease. There will be a pause and a price will be stated. This can be bargained with, however, the voice will insist on other prices of equal value. Occasionally, with a request is made, the voice will respond by telling the requester that they do not want the object enough, or that they are obviously requesting for an object for someone else to get around paying full price, in which the case the request is not fulfilled. This occurs most frequently for requests that can affect other people or can transfer possession. Accepting the deal causes the agreed upon wish or command to be fulfilled to the letter, but not past the letter. Furthermore, it will cause the occurrences stated and the price to be paid. The entity has, has actively stated that the occurrences and the price are intended to cause an amount of emotional and or physical pain equal to the amount that the requester desires with their request. How a parity it is calculated is at present unknown. The price has also been stated to be independent of any pain caused by fulfilling the request. As a final note, personnel in the chair have reported seeing an entity sitting in SB 738-3. However, all attempts to observe this entity were not seated in SB 738-2 have failed. And further descriptions of the entity are inconsistent between sessions, even with multiple sessions with the same person. When asked about this, the entity claims to be the same entity each time. Some frequently frequent descriptions of entity include a certain word I can't say on Twitch. And charming Is sessions. Oh. And charming sessions with the same person that are close in time reports similar to or identical entity appearances. Sessions with different people that are close in time report different entities' appearances. Descriptions of the voice do not match the voice reported on the equipment. And that's the entity. Basically, its nickname is 
is the I think the devilish deal maker. So it's kind of like the devil. You're making a deal with the devil. You ma- you're making a deal with the devil, but you're also fucking the devil. What? No. Oh. No. Okay. Get- okay, when, as a child, you are not allowed to say such things. Yes. Shut the fuck up, dragon. No, it. They would cause you pain. The equal oh, amount okay. of the deal. Okay. Okay. God. No. Where did you even get that from? I know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Dragon, thinking. I think that's all we need to know for why. The thing is, depending on the deal, I, I'm starting to think it's only one because only one person can only go in there at a given time. With the deal, devil. If if it if we think it's dangerous, if not, it could be reclassified. Someone could sit there, yeah, and ask for the universe to cease to exist. But you would also I have think to. Someone would be able to pay that much, it. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, I don't think they would be able to live. <laughs> one, the deal maker seems to be reluctant to do anything that affects more than one person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they also want things to be paid in equal amount, equal amount of suffering for what they're receiving. Then yeah, I think only one. Yeah. Only one makes it up. Usually, deals of the devil aren't usually. (laughs) Okay. Question. So lighthearted, but with this one, this SCP, it is. <laughs> Question: So, what? if it causes like equal pain, right? Yes. For your deal, what if you make a deal to kiss the devil? I. <sighs> Your I want to kiss. I want to kiss the SCPs. That's my response. Only kiss. What the I fuck is wrong with I want to only give them a kiss. Kiss. I want to. But anyway, you're kiss. not old enough. To only kiss the, the devil. hey. <laughs> this the devil is ageless. The, the devil is ageless, but you need to at least be an appropriate age to kiss an adult to kiss the devil. I'm pretty sure they Fair would point. say no. <laughs> if I was an adult, I would kiss the devil. I think the devil wants to kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'd have any interest in kissing a mortal. Yeah, that's 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 the point. Yeah, but like, make you're making a deal with it though. You would trade that's your true. soul for a you fucking kiss. That they will literally refuse ones they don't like. But yeah. that's raising the question: If I even have a soul? Because last time I checked, the only thing in my soul slot is a, a empty can of Pringles. Then you're. Then... That is a Floridian soul. <laughs> <laughs> then I, then I guess you're gonna give him an empty can of Pringles for that kid. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate mosquitoes. But that also means that your soul is only worth an empty can of Pringles. How much do you get that? How how much would you get for recycling that? None. Well, like, it depends if you're in like Germany or not, because you do earn money in Germany if you recycle. Yeah, like most of the time you'll get some amount of money when you recycle, depending on where you are. I know that certain states do that as well. Level up once you uh, exit Florida. Do you think it's because the thing is okay? Uh, when you go into Florida, you can't leave. That bridge that you have to cross to enter Florida, it fucking evaporates. What? I've been to Florida. It fucking evaporates. It evaporates. Florida isn't an island. Dragon, I've been to Florida. I flew there. And I flew out. Are you okay? No. (laughs) All right. No, I, I feel like that's kind of obvious. Have Have you been spending too much time with the Gators? Yes, I think they have. I I think the Florida Gators are actually 
a mimet have mimetic properties? We need to classify <laughs> Florida's gators as an SCP. I, I have no doubt that that is an SCP, but not mimet mimetic. Yeah. Properties, they'd probably be protecting another state from Florida. <laughs> anyway, for this next SCP, uh, I I believe it is uh, very destructive. Oh. So, uh, so it's anyway. like everything that I say to your mental health. Most likely. Anyway, uh, SCP-742 is a retrovirus approximately Redacted times more complex than any known naturally occurring virus. SCP-742 infects all cell types but initially only enters the lactic cell and lactic cycle and helper T cells, leading to a state of immu immunocompromise that allows SCP-742 to infect every one of the infected subject's cells. Infected cells secrete hormones that increase appetite as well as a single compound. Compound Once full infection is achieved, concentration of the single compound reaches a target level and infection enters stage 2. During stage 2, SB742 affects the nervous system, causing the infected subject to reverently consume large quantities of protein-rich food and then seek dark secluded area. At this point, the subject enters a state of hibernation, slowing their metabolism to a point of apparent death. During this uh, period, SP-742 retrovirus it completely reverse transcribes itself into the affected subject's DNA and deactivates its viral properties. Following this event, the subject is designated SP-742-1. Newly created S instances of SP-742-1 Use the food energy ingested during the viral phase to alter their psychology, psych resulting in an organism superficially similar to a human being, but with a second alimentary tract linked than a sponge roof of the mouth. Several new organs of an indeterminate function and a subtly altered nervous system. Once full transformed instances of SP-742-1, continue to function as if they were normal human beings and are virtually indistinguishable without medical examination. However, SP-742 infection destabilizes the genome during the first transcription, leading to symptoms consistent with the with telomerase but dies function within approximately a month. SCP-742-1 can prevent this by ingesting human stem cells. In the wild, SP-742-1 are nocturnal hunters preying on isolated humans. The victim is first paralyzed by a venomous bite, then drained of bone marrow via redacted. Occasionally, some of the victim's flesh will also be cannibalized for substance. Instances of, of SP-742-1 do not age normally, and if supplied with stem cells, are biologically immortal. Instances of SP-742-1 specifically target younger victims because of the higher volumes of stem cells that can be obtained. Children who still have baby teeth will be found with their teeth missing in addition that expunged. Instances of SP-742-1 will also target pregnant mothers in order to enter an infectious state. Normally, SP-742-1 also uh, uses poropotent stem cells from bone marrow to re regenerate itself, and is incapable of spreading S is and is incapable of spreading SP seven four two infection. However, after ingesting at least redacted grams of totipotent stem cells, SCP seven four two dash one secretes a small amount of fluid filled with the SCP seven four two retrovirus from the re redacted glands. This fluid injected with that expunge major artery of a human victim is primarily a transmission vector for the SP-742 infection. Instances of SCP-742-1 behave so servantly toward the instance, instance that infected them. So it's a virus that literally takes you completely over. It's a virus that makes people vampires. Yeah. I wouldn't call them vampires. 
Vampires drink blood. These ones go for bones and babies. Yeah. Oh, there's 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 types of vampires throughout mythology that do that. I would consider them separate than the original vampire mythos. Nah. Because there's way too many things grouped up as vampires that are technically not vampires. They just have a similar diet. But they're totally different. Yeah. Isn't there like a mythological creature where like it attacks pregnant women that are similar like to this? Yeah, there's uh, my first thought is if I remember correctly, there's something similar to that in uh, was it Indonesian or Filipino? I think I uh, I think it might have been Filipino. It's slightly um, different than this in that with in that case, they only one, they attack at night, two, they attack very differently. A piece of the body disconnects from the rest of the body, flies around to and attacks people. So yeah, very yeah. different. Also with that one, it's only females and it's not uh yeah, and not children. Different. What did it children and babies. Well, did it attack I, or, a pregnant trans man if it only attacks yeah. women? Did it say only? Uh, the, the main thing I was getting at is just trying to piece together some of the inspirations for the Sussex Oh. Rather than say, this is this SCP. No, I will say it's pretty destructive if, if it's like goes yeah. into a pandemic sense. Like, yeah, it's going to cause damage. I, I would go so far as to say that if this got out in a pandemic sense, uh, humanity is fucked. Though, here's the thing. I Hold on, let me see the containment procedure, because I, I didn't see it being contained. Humans are very bad with pandemics. There are humans that will purposely walk around infected and go, you know what? They're not infected. Oh. Heal. Oh, okay. I just wait, 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 wait. I have good news. What? There is not a cis person in here anymore. Shut there up. are no cis people any in, in here anymore. Very Hatchet's not the token cis anymore. That's not good news. That's yes, just it? news. Apparently, uh, apparently, uh, oh yeah, I forgot. The virus also makes a person immortal as long as they kick in the stem cells. Oh yeah. Uh, no. Not very good. Yeah, and also. Um, apparently it's stored at site 19, and we know everything that's all on that site. All the most dangerous SCPs get put there. <laughs> Honestly, I don't get, I don't think that that's very practical. <laughs> because what that means is that if site 19 has containment breaches, then the things <laughs> that are going to get out are statistically far more likely to cause harm. To me, it would make more sense to just, like, try to divvy up the super dangerous things as best you can to different sites. I think I think they did spread it out a bit. Like, they put, like, most of the dangerous SCPs are either at Site-19 or Site-17. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I think that this could easily end humanity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> most of this can make the people immortal that it infects. If it goes all yeah. the way through. So. Anyone anyone object? No. No one here is going to object to that statement after the existence of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> We're already oh, dealing with it. We've had an example of the exact same thing happening with the World of Warcraft virus event thing. <laughs> World of Warcraft virus. Yeah, there was apparently a bug in the World of Warcraft that acted like an infectious virus. Yeah. And it was basically a preview of what was to come in 2020, but nobody knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, all right. So going in the areas of infection on purpose to spread it to others. Tell me that doesn't sound like something that's happened already. 
So here's the thing. The next SCP is one that was tested with 682. And it's also very popular. Oh no. Oh no, Jerry, you already know what this is. SCP-743 is a stainless steel... Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought I'd mention, please do tell me if awkward gum-smacking sounds start coming through my microphone, because I'm eating some lightsabers gummy. Okay. I will mute if I need to. Well, I can... I learned how to edit ba out background noises, so if it does get too much, edit it out. Oh yeah, the big thing is I just don't want to annoy you. Oh, that's fine. Anyway, SCP-743 is a stainless steel chocolate fountain, 112 centimeters tall and 47 centimeters wide, with a mass of 35 kilograms. On the base of SCP-743 is a la laser-etched logo of Sephra, a company that specializes in producing chocolate fountains. SP743 usually appears to be a in pristine condition, immaculately clean, well polished, and completely undamaged. SP743 can be dis disassembled into its component parts, but standard examination of these individual components do not reveal any unusual traits. When assembled, SP743 exhibits several different behaviors. One, resting. SCP-743 displays no apparent activity. 2. Flowing. SCP-743 appears to operate like a standard chocolate fountain. A heated chocolate flavored dark brown liquid flows from inside the crown down over the tears and into the, the base. This liquid smells and tastes like high quality dark chocolate, and in fact its aroma is quite enticing. Subjects who can consume significant quantities of the liquid typically experience a feeling of warmth and euphoria. Chemical analysis shows this liquid contains many substances found in dark chocolate, though with higher concentrations of many nutrients, particularly sugars and amino acids. The flow of liquid is not affected by the presence or absence of fountain chocolate or anything else in its base. 3. Feeding. A semi-regular intervals when Organic material is available nearby. A stream of small brown ant-like entities start pouring out of the crown of SP-743. These ants, which can number in the millions, swarm over the available animal, plant, and fungal material, cut small pieces of this, these materials with their pincers, and carry these chunks into SP-743's base. SCP-743 Seems to prefer consuming live humans, particularly those who have consumed SCP-743's 73, liquid, but will also consume live animals, dead humans, and animals, plants, fungi, and even some possessed animal and plant material. Oh, uh, process animal and plant material, not possess. These ants have been known to travel more than redacted kilometers round trip, bringing a carcass piece by piece back to SCP-743. Hunting. If sufficient organic material is not readily available to SV743, different types of anthropoid entities may emerge from SV743's crown. Many, many of these entities resemble known arthropods, but a large number resemble no known species of arthropod or, or other animal. These arthropods, which are always the same color as SCP-743's liquid, are usually specialized for a particular task. Types of these arthropods, uh, I mean arthropods, that have been observed including small winged insectoids used for scouting, observation, and reconnaissance. I mean, reconnaissance, I think that's how you say it. Insectoids that, that can bore through most materials, including steel and titanium, although individuals can each only bore out small amounts. Of the earth harsh substances before expiring. A seemingly endless stream of insectoids from SP743 will eventually bore clay through. Larger, more aggressive insectoids and arachnoids used to hunt down prey in a manner similar to instances of SCP 
2031. Again, individually, they are nothing more than a nuisance, but SP743 have been known to produce swarms of aggressive arthropods normally in the billions, more than enough to data expunged. And finally, maintaining. SP743 has been known to use arthropods to clean and polish itself, repair dents, scratches, holes, and nicks, and even put itself together when disassembled. SP743 doesn't need to be turned on to start following, but it can change the positions to it control of its controls by itself. Although the arthropods that emerge from SP743 are significantly stronger than normal counterparts, they are not significantly tougher. Stomping an individual arthropod with a heavy boot will usually be sufficient to kill it, at which time it will fall apart into a drop or puddle of SV743's liquid and quickly evaporate its enticing aroma lingering. However, arthropods from SV743 are almost never encountered alone. It is not yet known how the arthropods communicate with each other or even if, if they are individual consciousness or part of the collective mind. It is also not yet known who or what controls the arthropods, where the organic matter taken to S into SV743 base goes, how SV743 can produce a seemingly endless supply of liquid and arthropods, or where all the liquid comes from. SV743 does not appear to be invulnerable, however, SV743 is both high, highly resistant to damage and will employ its arthropod army as an active defense system. It is theorized that SVS743 can be destroyed using data expunged. However, due to apparent extra dimensional characteristics of SP743, coupled with its inherent resistance to damage, no termination testing can be performed on SP743 without O5 authorization. And that's it. I found a musket that has three shots in it somehow. Huh? This makes no goddamn sense at all. Yeah, but anyway, with the SCP. Uh, did they. I feel like it's ultimately not all that dangerous, as long as you keep it in just a big metal room. And fed. Yeah, true. Like, like just, just, just give it declassification, keep it locked in a big metal room, and you're golden. Doesn't, it's not big, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, I'd say certain groups. Yeah, and like I said, uh, they did test it with six eight two, and it said it was it was the most delicious test that's ever been tested with, or something like that. Yeah. It was <laughs> he found it very delicious. Interesting. Have they they attempted letting the ants run over him? The ants did try and attack him, but it gave up. That's fair. I wouldn't. I I wouldn't want to deal with that either. <laughs> I mean, because eventually he he uh, adapted to their pincer, so he could, they couldn't even take anything anyway. Yeah. I have to go. All right. See you, dragon. Good night. Bye. They leave for free of the child for now. <laughs> Are you all right, Jerry? I think the testing of six eight two <laughs> made them question things. And the thing is, you had to get O five approval for this, so O five had to approve testing of six eight two with the chocolate water fountain. A chocolate fountain. 
<laughs> Jerry, it tasted good. It tasted good. <laughs> How many more were you wanting to do today? Um, I only got two left, and then I'm done. And neither of them are really long, as far as I can tell. Okay, fine. That's because my head can rest for years. Well, this one we could not read it because it says object class Keter slash neutralize. Well, let's let's read it anyway. All right. I was just wanting to know there's not like ten more for for some that I <laughs> Yeah, no. You just plan to read like fifty SCPs in one sitting. <laughs> uh, alongside the time it takes to deliberate and go on our dumbass tangents. Yeah. If I were to do that I'd probably start in the morning, then go all the way up to now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, SCP-744 is a vaguely humanoid amalgam of decaying scrap metal and oxidized iron, measuring approximately 33 meters in height and calculated to weigh at least 325,000 kilograms. The entity managed to offset its constant state of decay by ingesting any nearby metal objects. After which the mass of the absorbed object was integrated into its physical makeup. Absorption of metal objects seemed to augment SCP-744's strength and resistance to physical harm. SCP-744 displayed remarkable physical strength when confronted with a M1 Abrams deployed in an effort towards containment and struck the tank with sufficient forced to flip it over entirely, at which point it was- <laughs> Fuck you, Hatchet. <laughs> yeah, I feel a little better. Alright, now I gotta look fine. Now we're all wise. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so. At which point it was consumed by SB-744. Bullets in our- did this SCP eat your train of thought? Maybe. <laughs> Bullets and artillery rounds of varying caliber were absorbed directly due to the entity's unexpected appearance and the dan danger it posted to the civilian populace. Mobile Task Force Omega-7 was dispatched to contain S SCP-744. Incident Log 361 uh, 912 hours. Reports began coming into Site-19's monitoring station of the emergence of a rust monster from the scrapyard located 31 degrees redacted, north 85 degrees redacted, west redacted. National Guard dispatched under the pretense of a national gas fissure. 942 hours. Assistance of the entity confirmed, M1 Abrams tank moves in and attempts to neutralize the entity. Measure 45 hours. Entity finishes consuming Abrams tank. Noticeable growth evidence. Redacted National Guard retreats. Containment procedures begin. Entity be given designated designation SP-744. 949 hours. SP-076-2 requests that Mobile Task Force, Force Omega-7 be dispatched to neutralize the threat. Overseer 05-Redacted approves request. Evacuation of nearby civilian structures begins. 953 hours, Omega-7 begins containment operation. SCP-076-2, accompanied by Agent Redacted and Redacted, move in to a certain ascertain SCP-744's Structural com composition and evaluate any weaknesses. SCP-105 provides backup through a high-resolution image taken of the area by a SR-71 belonging to the Foundation. Mem members Omega-714 
15, 19, and 20 are equipped with HK-016 compatible magnetized plastic rounds and deployed 250 to 300 meters from the target to contain its movement. 955 hours, Omega-7-8 and 076-2 enter combat with the entity SP-076-2 materializes a Swyhander style two-handed sword. Swyhander? Swyhander, yeah. 956 hours upon seeing SCP-74's apparent instinct to devour the weapon, audio recordings indicate that SCP-076-2 yelled a classic Greek phrase, believed to be... I'm not even... I'm gonna try, but I'm gonna butcher it. Uh, why? Well, I have faith. That's as best as I can get to it. Sorry, what? Why? Abe. Hmm. I see. Hold on, I can send you pictures to just show how hard it is to read that. <laughs> Yeah. What? Those aren't letters. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Those are, those are Greek. Those are ancient Greek letters. Yeah. <laughs> That's not something that can <laughs> be said in English yeah. without some understanding of the Greek language. So we'll just say insert Greek term here and move on. <laughs> yep. SCP-744 takes advantage of SCP-076-2's lack of movement and strikes him with his right fist, sending SCP-076-2 flying approximately 400 meters and rendering, rendering him unconscious. 9.57 hours, Omega-7-8. Engages with SCP-744 in combat. SCP-744 attempts to strike. Omega-7-8 but misses. Omega-7-14, 15, 19, and 20 fire on SCP-744 with little effect. 9.58 hours, Omega-7-8 inflicts severe lacerations to the legs of SCP-744. P744 causing it to stumble. Omega 7 8 then disengages under the orders of the Overseer 05 1. I mean, not that is wrong. That's redacted. Owing to the potential for SCP 744 to absorb SCP 193. 9 hours. Lacerations on the leg of SCP 744 spontaneously heal. Significant decrease in the entity's overall size noted. 1001 hours. SCP 105 remotely administers 20 cc's of adrenaline ketamine solution to SCP 076 2. SCP 076 2 regains consciousness and recommends military action against SCP 744. SCP 076 2 re enters combat over 05. Dash Redacted recommends the use of thermobaric explosives against SCP-744 based on statements made by SCP-076-2. 1007 hours, Overseer 05-Redacted informs SCP-076-2 that a suitable location has been found for detonation. SCP-076-2 disengages and begins to taunt SCP-7. 44, causing SV-744 to charge towards SV-076-2. SV-076-2 then begins to lead SV-744 to designated detonation area. 1058 hours, SV-744 arrives at designated detonation area. 1059 hours, SV-076-2 delivers a message to blow 
to SP-74 for his legs, severing them from Ixie's hip. SP-76-2 quickly retreats and calls for detonation. 1100 hours, fuel air, fuel air barrel bark, explosion, explosive detonated. 11, 1109 hours, clock clears, SP-076-2 asserts containment of SP-744 and secures it for its four remaining pieces. 11.30 hours, this information office releases news of SP-744's destruction upon the guise of a tornado and the resulting explosion as a result of an accident at a sugar refinery. And that's it. Hmm. I mean, it's dead. It's been classified as neutralized. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty good for the place. It's just interesting. So, are you going to say we should put this in spoo tier or reassign? I mean, I don't think it deserves spoo tier. Because spoo tiers for things that aren't too dangerous, and this thing was clearly very dangerous. Like how he put the sun in it, just food tier. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you need the sun. I I still can't handle the fact that we threw people at the sun. <laughs> and I agree. It is kind of sad to hear when SPs are killed. Uh, but uh, it depends on SP. Like, if they could capture it, then you know, that would be nice and all. But if they couldn't, which is probably what happened here. I just broke my dumbass ankles. <laughs> uh, well, here's the um, last one. And I'm going to have to change some words as I read it. Because <laughs> I've already said before what it is. Oh, this is the one that has a lot about the, shall we say, German National Socialist Party. Yep. Got it. And and, and Twitch doesn't like it when we say the shortened version. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> SCP-750-KO is a humanoid figure dressed in a military uniform that commonly associated with the German Group Party in World War II. <laughs> <laughs> German group party. <laughs> that just gives me like that just gives me like an image of like a bunch of like German Americans who have just like like one guy's basement and they hang out in there and just do a bunch of German things. <laughs> yeah, that, that does not that that statement does not at all go along with what we're actually talking about. But we can't but I guess say it. Work. <laughs> yeah, I it will work. And a steel gas mask that resembles a GP-2 gas mask. SP-750-KO is equipped with both an exo and endoskeleton. The endoskeleton of SP-750-KO is connected to the gas mask. Said gas mask is able to power sp 750 k KO's endo and exoskeleton by converting gas that is typically associated with chemical warfare into electrical energy. The molecular structure of the exoskeleton and endoskeleton has an artificial lattice form, both consisting of a mixture of metals. SP 750 KO has the following engraved on this head W 222. Along with this SP 750 KO, has several other markings present of this of its form, which include the following of the symbol of I'm not going to say that one on its uh, a certain German group symbol on its right wrist, and a logo of Anderson's Robotics located on its left wrist, and Marshall Carter and Dark LTD on its left ankle. The other two I could say because they're like SP organizations. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> and here's here's what I'll say. Uh, to to streamline the process, we will simply refer to this uh, German group as uh, the dickheads. Yes. So it is. Uh, it has a uniform that is most frequently known for having been worn by the dickheads, and it has the dickhead symbol on its wrist. Let's move on. Yep. Following are other modifications present on SB 750 KO's body, shoulders within the shoulders of SB 750 KO are pockets of fluid that have the ability to cause a subject to suffer from myocardial infarctions and cause hemorrhages within the brain, resulting in memory loss. Said substance, substance can be administered via SP 750s KO's thumb pinky or middle finger, and the pocket are de depleted when but then the endoskeleton will begin producing more. Arms. Inside the arms of SP750-KO, there is a chamber that houses approximately 330 caliber bullets. Analysis of said bullets have traced them back to a unique run created by Anderson Robotics. SP750-KO is able to use their index and wing finger to fire bullets, typically leave SPXXX at speeds approximately 1,300 uh, meters per second. Volumes of bullets that, ex that exit SP750-KO typically less than 5 dB. I, I don't know what dB means. Uh... Like uppercase D and lowercase B. Uh, dig bick is okay. what that means. All right. Dig bick. <laughs> Once the chamber is depleted, the exoskeleton will begin the construction of more. Left side of the head, a button consisting of both silver and copper. When pressed, a second an exoskeleton will, will be produced surrounding SP750-KO's body. The second layer of SP750 KO's endoskeleton has a molecular structure similar to carbon nanotubes, thus preventing nearly all forms of physical attacks and explosives. The endoskeleton of SP750 KO has a power transfer unit that allows it to turn its electrical output into kinetic energy. Due to this, it has the ability to run at speeds that average out to 50 meters per second. Along with this, an internal device within SP750-KO allows itself to be cloaked up for up to two weeks, though SP750-KO can turn off the ability at will. SP750-KO is able to feel both heat and cold, despite lacking the necessary organ and systems. SP750-KO has a strong adverse reaction to light greater than 93 lumens. When exposed to light above 100 lumens, SCP-750-KO will shut down. This is believed to be due to SP-750-KO's original purpose by guarding facilities run by Marshall, Carter, and Dart LTDs. Later examinations of SP-750-KO determined that it was damaged during an attempted raid by the Chaos Exterminator scene sometime during 2003. The high intensity discharge shut off the system and is vulnerable to serious damage through the visual recognition device if the system is exposed to a higher light higher than 100 lumens. SCP SCP 750-KO was initially discovered by the Foundation following reports of a conflict between two known GOIs in Guangyang C and Jolnam. Do in South Korea during 2003. At the time of deployment, the Chaos Insurgency and Anderson Robotics members were engaged in a conflict. SCP 750 KO was discovered by NTF Gamma 13, which was de deployed to quell the conflict between two groups of interests. Two Anderson Robotics members were arrested at the scene, and four additional documents related to SCP 750 KO were collected. Basically, they don't say any. Doctors don't say any more about it. 
except that it's a guardian for this facility. Let's see. Question is, if they made it just to guard a facility, why the fuck did they have to? Why? Why? Why did they? Why did they go with the dickhead symbols? I don't know. Do, do, do these groups of interest just really like the dickheads? I don't know. Reason? Are they behind the dickheads? Did they help the dickheads? Who no. knows? I mean, the Maybe. Kansas Church C didn't like them. Because they tried to destroy the facility. <laughs> well, yeah. But this is... Wow. What was the name of the group? The... Robotics Anderson, thing that you Anderson's Robotics. Yeah, Anderson's Robotics and uh, Carter Marshall and Dark. Yeah. Like like the I I'm going to never read any SCP <laughs> the same again involving them <laughs> because now I know that they decided to make a dickhead robot. <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> just like you're just making a robot. For the purpose of guarding a facility, why it's so <laughs> unnecessary? Like, like you just have to have one of the guy you, you like, someone in the process of making that robot necessarily had to be ideologically inclined towards the dickheads. Yep, <laughs> and they just made and they just made the robot like that. And no one in the organization had an issue with it. Why? <laughs> it's so stupid and absurd. So, in conclusion, uh, Marshall Carter and Dark and that robotics company uh, can be confirmed to be fascists. Uh, as for the 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 big robot, I'd say certain groups because well, it's literally a guard bot. Not it's not like it's purposely trying to destroy stuff. It's just yeah. it's just got a job to do. Okay, so I wanted to see how much is a hundred lumens, and it's twenty watts. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's very easy to keep contained. <laughs> yeah. Wait, then why? Okay, then why <laughs> is it a keter? Because apparently, because I guess because of its powers. Yeah. Yeah, but. Again, like <laughs> put it in a box with a sixty watt bulb, and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> that almost makes me want to reclassify it, but it's still dangerous if 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 you know there's a power outage. Yeah, or it's nighttime and there's no street lights. Yeah, like why why would you design? Your guard robot to have such a massive deficiency. <laughs> like I get that it's for specific uses, but come on. Did they just have barely any control of it, so they decide the best way to deal with it is to just uh, <laughs> to just make it easy to shut off? I guess so. Is this the robot equivalency of an incendiary goat? <laughs> Maybe. Wait, no, it'd be more like flamethrower goats because there's actually an off switch. Yeah. So you said certain group. Yeah, I'd say certain group. They couldn't do that much damage. I it, it shoots bullets. It can inject you with dangerous chemicals. That's about it. And and can turn invisible for like up to two weeks. Yeah, it can turn invisible, but that's not inherently dangerous. I mean, you could just want to play hide and seek. You know? <laughs> just dickhead robot plays hide and seek in the dark. Just don't don't get caught by him because you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Also, don't catch him because you might get angry. All right, <laughs> and then you die. Yeah, right. <laughs> also, what are you saying? Why not to Judy? Uh, what? Uh, maybe why not make it with that deficiency? I think is when that showed up. 
Uh, that makes sense. I don't know. I I just I I can't. Un- I just. Why not have it easy like, to shut off? Well, yeah, but like, like you could just make some other function to turn it off. Like, like replace the button in the back of his head from producing a, a secondary armor to turn it off. <laughs> yeah, like you can just have a you can just have an off switch rather than making it so that it like like I live in a fairly dimly lit basement. It could not <laughs> function in my basement because I have what forty watt bulbs? Are you kidding me? And any any person who goes down to Ace Hardware will have the means to shut this thing off. <laughs> I could shine a flashlight on it, and it would shut off. <laughs> what? I I don't I, I don't get it. It's it's a giant dickhead <laughs> robot that's highly impractical in my. <laughs> Why? Wait, Maybe. actually, no, that makes sense because if they're pining to be like the dickheads, then they have to do completely impractical and stupid things so that they lose. <laughs> Is this their Wunderwaffel? Their <laughs> wonder weapon? Did, did they spend milli- millions upon millions of dollars on developing this thing that can be defeated with a lamp? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me, given the context. Oh my gosh. I will never, I will never pass up a chance to milk dickhead Germany. 